On behalf, of, on behalf of Andhra Chamber of Commerce, I welcome you all to this program. It is about biotechnology. I think redefine your business with biotechnology. That is the topic of the day. We organize, the Chamber organizes programs every month, at least two to three programs, something on MSME, ICT, and this time we have organized on biotechnology. And we have with us today Dr. Vidya. Sri Manoj Pillai and Dr. Pabita Therapan. Dr. Vidya is PhD in Biotechnology, Biotechnology Advisor and uh, Manotech Lab. And Mr. Manoj Pillai is an advisor of, uh, for the Andhra Chamber. He is the advocate of, from Supreme Court of India and Biotechnology Consultant and Honorary Advisor of ACC, our chamber. And Dr. Pabita Therapan is a PhD in Biosciences, Certified Patent, Trademark, Copyright and Design Agent. So biotechnology, I think all of us are aware that, you know, it is used in everyday applications. If you take our vaccines, if you take agriculture, if you take environment, and it is even in, in fact used in cheese production also, alcoholic drinks and so many things. So how important is biotechnology in today's scenario and how it is going to take the future world, you know, into its fold? Because so far we have been talking only about IT. Now how biotechnology is going to take its fold in, uh, you know, in the future? That is what we are going to see. I request Ms. Vidya to please take up and then we can start the session. Over to Vidya. Hey, Good evening, everybody. I'm Dr. Vidya and my topic is Relevance of biotechnology in the Indian economy, how to maximize the profit in the field of biotechnology. So biotechnology is biological technology or technology based on biology. That means it is a product of integration of biology with the technology. And it is based on basic biological science like molecular biology, biochemistry, cell biology, embryology, genetics, and microbiology. So it has wider applications like plant breeding, crop improvement, uh, uh, RDNA technology, drug discovery, pharma industries, health, diagnostic, therapeutics, etc. So, the Indian uh, in, in the biotechnology sector in India is very end and is growing very fast. But the the department, uh, the government of India forces the importance of biotechnology or the potential of biotechnology long. Uh, run back and they established a nat national biotechnology board in 1982 and the department of biology in 1986. So with this, uh, uh, the, the, India is the first country to establish a separate department for the biotechnology and this uh, department establishes uh, BIRAC, uh, that is Biotechnology Industrial Research Council in 2012 to strengthen and empower biotechnology sectors for biotechnology enterprises. The Mirage brings innovators and funders to the common table and make their concept to reality. So Bharat has, uh, has taken up multitude of activities from financial high-risk research to supporting nascent ideas, creating bio-incubator centers, and also policy advocacy, etc. But the biotechnology industry or biotech industry in India is very, it's facing several challenges or it has its own weakness. That includes... That include uh, the challenges in, uh, in includes biotechnology solutions or products request ethical and regulatory clearances, making the process long, expensive, and cumbersome. The low remuneration of the scientists, and also when compared to the developed countries, biotechnology sector or biotechnology research is mainly funded by the public exchequer. Lack of innovations and the absence of proper enforcement of GLP or good laboratory practices, and the lack of good quality checking 
and the lack of interaction between academia and industry. All these are the faces challenges or the challenges uh, faced by the biotechnology sector in India. So we need an active government support or policies. So recently uh, announced policies and uh, uh, reforms are uh, aligned with the interest of investors. So the innovation need to be protected. So there's an enforcement of strong IP regime. And also in the case of pharma industries, just the, the drug discovery is very important. So they require a fast regulatory, transparent and consistent approval procedure. And also the building legal and institutional framework of infrastructure for conducting clinical trials is also very important. And we need to promote the private sector investment to substitute the import. So government has launched several initiatives to support uh, biosect in industry that includes making India pro skill India startup India programs aim to develop India a world class biotechnology or bio manufacturing hub. So through making India process we can uh, uh, disseminate the government programs and also other information that is relevant to the establishment and growth of startups SMEs and companies. So through making India process, India become first in Southeast Asia and 67th world rank in easing ease of doing business. And it is the 12th largest destination for biotech in innovation globally. India, Indian biotech industry now holds three percentage of the global market share and third largest in Asia specific region. Now nearly 1,250 IPs are generated per year. And also India, has, India is the country with highest number of US uh, FDA approved manufacturing plants outside India. Another important initiative of uh, making India to uh, for the biomedical research and innovative ideas is in Bihar. Atma Nirbhar Bharat or self reliant India. So it is the vision of our Prime Minister to become to make India a self reliant nation. So through Atma Nirbhar Bharat, India becoming energy independent by 2047. So Indian government has already approved amendments to the national policy on biofuels and took decisions to increase the biofuel production. Through bi National Biopharma Mission Innovate India, it is a DBT project that aimed to bring together industry and academy in order to promote entrepreneurship and indigenous manufacturing in biopharma sector. So government of India also aimed to promote sustainable agriculture production through organic farming. So government encouraged several organic schemes like Paramparagat Krishi Vigasana Yojana, Mission Organic Value Chain Development for Northeastern Region and Capital Investment Subsidy Scheme. Another important mission uh, for the biotech sector is Adal J. J. Anisantan Biotech Mission, that is to address the challenges that is faced by the maternal and uh, child health, antimicrobial resistance, vaccine for the infectious disease, etc. <coughs> The mission COVID Selection and Mission uh, COVID Vaccine 19 Development Mission, that is for the development of mainly the research and development in the field of vaccines. Another important program to strengthen the development of vaccine for the epidemic disease is Mission Program in CP. So, in the agriculture sector, the main focus is to the pulses. So, the genetic enhancement of pulses is the main focus of DBG program, and that is uh, so that we can provide the farmers with improved protective varieties which is that how disease resistant and climate resistant traits. So uh, to promote a skill development in the biological sector or biotechnology sector, the life science sector skill development council was set up under national skill development corporation. So startups, startups are important to promote startup India initiative. The DBT along with the BRAC has launched various schemes and programs. So DPT have a fund, fund called the Biotechnology Innovation Fund uh, under accelerating entrepreneurs. So that is to support the startups uh, and also the R&D programs. So there's another scheme called the Biopreneur Scheme that is to promote the bio incubators and the bio uh, biotechnology parks. So these biotechnology parks and bio incubators provide all the necessary facilities for the biotech startups and entrepreneurs and also for the promotion of public private partnership. So when you consider the, uh, the 2021, there are uh, 1,128 new startups are established and they are expected to touch 10,000 by 2024. So that means on an average, 94 companies are being set up every month in the country or nearly three companies a day. I, to, uh, to favor the growth of biotechnology sector in India, 
the foreign investment is a major concern. So with the help of FDA India that support the collaboration of the small uh, SMBs or startups with the right foreign investors. So with this inflow, we can establish uh, more biotech startups and end up, uh, entrepreneurs in India. So according to the latest FDA policy, 100% FDA is allowed for greenfield farmers, brownfield farmers, and medical device manufacturing. So what, how, how biotechnology is contributing to the Indian economy or Indian GDP? So if we're considering the uh, bioeconomy uh, rate of 2021, we can say that the Indian bioeconomy was uh, accounted to be uh, 80.1 uh, $1 billion dollars. That means 2.6 percentage share of Indian total Indian GDP, and it has registered 40 percentage growth of over 2020. So the major sectors that is contributing to the Indian GDP are uh, the bio agriculture sector, bio pharma sector, bio industrial sector, bio IT, and bio uh, service sectors. These are the major sectors that is contributing to the Indian GDP. Biopharma sectors is the highest contributing segment to the Indian economy. That is 49% share of the total bioeconomy up from the biopharma sector. And the bioeconomy was estimated to be $39.4 million in 2021 as opposed to uh, $38 billion in 2020. So the key components to the bio segments are diagnostics, vaccines, and therapeutics. Diagnostics constitute 52 percentage. Vaccines constitute 26 percentage. We know that India is the second largest producer of vaccines and the major contributor of DPT vaccines, measles vaccines, hepatitis vaccines, and the WHO vaccines. Therapeutics constitute about 22 percentage. Major major includes oncology medications, diabetic medications, uh, anti-infection medications, etc. The bioindustrial segment includes. Uh, was uh, the major uh, uh, categorizes into biofuels or bioenergy that is blending the petrol with the ethanol that is includes in the biofuel sector that has registered a growth of 138.8 uh, percentage growth. The industrial and science is another important segment which shows a growth rate of 65.7 and the biodiesel value biodiesel is the diesel that is uh, generated from the animal fats that is estimated to be to 13 dollar million dollars and the bio bioplastics uh, market was valued uh, find, uh, 515 million dollars so in 2021 the total bioindustrial segment was estimated at 10.3 billion dollars compared to 5.1 billion dollars in 2020 that means it's it, this segment registered a strong growth rate of 101.3 percentage in 2021 so Next sector is bio agriculture sector. The agriculture is the backbone of Indian economy. So the, the major uh, segments that is contributing to the bio agriculture is BT cotton, bio pesticide, bio stimulants, bio fertilizers, etc. So BT cotton is the main, uh, main India is the country with uh, produces large, uh, largest, highest number of BT cotton in, uh, in the world. And it contributes about 92% of the total bio agri economy. And another important uh, factor that is contributing to the uh, bio agri sector is the transgenic crop. That is nearly 20 percentage is contributing. Whereas international average growth rate in this sector is 13 percentage. That means the total bio economy value of agriculture segment was estimated at 10.48 million dollars. Even though COVID-19 is a pandemic diseases, it has contributed to the Indian economy. That is, the bioeconomy from the COVID-19 was estimated to be $14.56 billion in 2021, of which vaccine accounted to be $8.7 billion, and while the testing accounted to be $5.9 billion. That means each dose of COVID vaccine created an economic value of $6, and each sample test is estimated at 11. Another important sector is bioservices and bio IT sector. The bio sector comprises of CRO, CMPOs, and bio IT segment, and it is contributing $5.4 billion. So, Indian GDP in future means our, uh, our nation has a target to touch uh, $150 billion by 2025 and uh, 270 to $300 billion by 2030. That means 3.3 to 3.5 share of Indian GDP uh, is expected. 
So by 2027, India became the world's largest economy. We will surpass Japan and Germany. And by 2030, India became the largest, third largest stock market. The major contributing factor is the biopharma uh, sectors. Mainly the diagnostic vaccines and bioservices sectors is contributing to the Indian GDP. To be concluded, biotechnology can improve the standard of living of countries' people. We know that India is highly populous state country, and so the diseases are there. We need uh, we need to uh, uh, target these diseases with early diagnosis and advanced treatment therapies. So, with the advancement of biotechnology is backed by the FDA inflow, we can reduce the dependence on fossil fuels. So, that is with the help of biofuels and biodiesels, and we can also solve the hunger problems through uh, food um, uh, food technologies or by uh, by uh, emerging economies so the indian uh, uh, we can build how can we can build it is, is to strengthen the our education system to researchers and as well as translation ecosystem we need to develop and deploy new technologies we we need to build and nurture the startups entrepreneurial programs and industrial base so we need we have a strong connection with academy and industry so thereby we can position our India as a strong manufacturing hub for innovative, affordable, accessible product for domestic as well as global markets. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Vidya. Uh, I think I need to speak after Dr. Vidya. Am I audible? Yes, please. Yes, sir. You are yeah, you are audible. Am I audible? Yeah, clear. Yes, yeah. please. But my video is not on. Thank you very much. I mean, as a person involved in the chamber. So I don't think so. I need an introduction. And I everybody in the chamber knows me as the consultant. So um, that's not required. But still, I mean, I would appreciate that um, if more and more questions are put forward other than going to be an uh, innovative uh, session where we are going to uh, explain because it has been properly explained by Dr. Vidya itself the importance of uh, uh, biotechnology and how it should be useful to all of us. So I would suggest that uh, we all take this very seriously and we try to work it out in that model. So my topic as Hello. 
Hello. Am I there? Your voice is floating. Am I there? Is it audible now? Hello. Yeah, yeah, please uh, continue. Please continue. Yeah. Okay, thank you. So I'm just uh, trying to create an awareness among our members why we all should think about switching over or other having the biotechnology firms as an additional um, way of business life pattern in addition to existing businesses. So if you are in the pharma sector, you should always think about expanding and scaling up your pharma industry by doing some research and development work in the field of biotechnology. So that was the reason I was planning to have such a seminar and I requested Dr. Vidya and also Dr. Babita to present us with the importance of biotechnology. And the concept of introduction, how biotechnology has been helpful to our economy has been beautifully explained to us by Dr. Vidya. Now we all realize the importance of biotechnology and how it has been increasing our GDP. When everybody was sitting at home and not having any income during the COVID crisis, as Dr. Vidya has told in the slideshow, India was making money or her economy was booming because we had the source of biotechnology. And because we had the economy uh, of biotechnology uh, con concept uh, got into our system in the early times during the Rajiv Gandhi period itself, he had come out and created a separate department of biotechnology. So the awareness among our lawmakers and, and with the need for biotechnology was there. So now we need to think about it. So now the question comes, I'm a startup or I am in the business of pharma. I want to jump into biotechnology. What all I should look into? So I'm here trying to look into the legal aspects of biotechnology. See, when you think about the legal aspects of biotechnology, the first and foremost thing which comes into our mind is that uh, we have to look into the policy of the sovereign, whether the sovereign is supporting my concept or not. Thankfully, if you look at every state in India, they got a biotechnology policy. And uh, the more startups have got registered in the state of Maharashtra, followed by um, um, Karnataka, and third comes to Telangana. And the list goes, so even, even though we have a lot of um, BT firms and BT companies in Gujarat, most startups are seen mushrooming in the state of Telangana and Karnataka because we have a lot of B type of universities which really takes up into the stream of action. So the whole concept of looking into it has to be looked into that fashion. So I would request for the slides to be um, put across so that you will get a feel of it. So I would request my set of slides may be uploaded into the screen. Thank you very much. See, as you look at it, I'm talk, going to talk about the legal perspective side. So the next slide, please. So if you look at it, if you may wonder what you mean by cradle to grave analysis. The cradle to grave analysis is a very unique concept, which it says grave, if the word by the word does not mean that you're going to down in the whole business environment. We are talking about the disaster management. We are going to talk about a problematic situation. How do you come out of it? So that's what the cradle to grave analysis. So before you start any business, you need to know a cradle to grave analysis is very much important. The second thing what we need to think about is how do we handle the situations when it comes to the forum or biotechnology form? Because as a startup, all you know is that you are aware of it, or rather, I don't have to tell you how to run a business, but what we have found in the early stages of business is that we do rather neglect the legal part of it. We think that legally we are not required to do anything because only when there's a litigation, we need to fight for it. But we are trying to promote a concept called preventive litigation, where we are trying to tell the people that 
you need to protect your mark you need to protect your right ear you need to protect your uh, the whole working pattern generally you're going to have a successful business so that's what i'm trying to talk about the cradle to grave analysis that is how they are going to do their business where you are going to start the business and the chip in india if you are going to chip in your biotechnology business in telangana you should be well aware about the biotechnology policy of the state of telangana if you are going to do it in tamil nadu you should know the biotechnology policy of tamil nadu so the as the venue is concerned you should know which state is going to help you out and how you are going to run the show and uh, more than ever you should know the nowadays work from home concept has very much come in you can even make people sit at any destination get the help from any people and get things moving so when you come and talk about work from home model there are got a lot of legal aspects which is looked into it the parameters of how you protect the confidentiality the product how you protect the intellectual rights of your invention everything has to be looked into and more common is you have to look into why i should use such resources when it is not beneficial to me or when there is increase in the gdp so when there is a benefit is there starting of a gdp increase is there why not i look for it and go for it so the whole concept is very very simple so the thing is that we need to look into it and we need to explore the possibility of how we can get things moving the next part is that we need to find out uh, how we are going to work on it. so next slide please see on july 27 the economic times reported that there are a lot of startups which has been come into registration and as i told you the top one is maharashtra followed by telangana and karnataka and the list of that is also there in the next slide next slide please which is clearly says that maharashtra is topping the list next slide please hello next slide please so what we are trying to say that hello 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 i think uh, rather than going to the slides i think you can see me speaking that would be more appropriate and correct because what i'm going to convey is more important rather than wasting your uh, innovative thoughts and processes looking at the slide rather than hearing is more uh, impressive rather than reading through it because i believe in trying to explain things to you in a very um, lucid and a very simple manner so what i'm trying to convey is that as told by dr vidya we have got lot of industries which has been help being promoted or rather the growth rate has gone up because of the involvement of our technology in that we have been called as an agriculture con- country where agriculture is a backbone of our economy but still that backbone can be strengthened if you are going to use biotechnology as a tool because our gdp will go up if you look at the pharma industry you have seen that the even during the covid times our gdp was doing well because of the contribution from the biotechnology even if you look at the biofuels you find yeah, energy sectors biofuels everything is being coming through biotechnology and if you only will look at the medical uh devices like uh, anything uh, has been improved or the improvement has happened because of biotechnology leave it on that even for cosmetic purposes if a person feels i need to have hair i don't want to look bald biotechnology comes to your help because the stem cell concept and all these things are been addressed by biotechnology so everywhere in our day to day lives biotechnology has become an inseparable part of our life now the question comes how do i use these technology which is available as as a startup the first and foremost thing startups has to look into it because i try to look at the problems of startup into five categories the first and foremost category he pieces is that intellectual property which is going to be well explained by our speaker dr babita ji how to protect intellectual property 
And the second issue which comes to you is how do we look into the concept of usage of this particular knowledge? That's the second thing. When you, which when you are going to target, which state you are going to look into. So that's looking at the big, big policy of the state. Will know. And third thing, what we we are all worried is the funding part. Of it. Whether you have actual funds available to run the show. Hello. I think there's some Hello. Hello. The funding part of it. That's the seed funding and how the funding has been happening. So when you're somebody is going to fund you something, you should know, you should really take confidence of your investor who is going to fund for your projects. So if he's really interested in funding, he likes to know the in and out of your business. He likes to know in and out of your invention, innovation. So, but you have to be ultra careful what to, to say and what not to say. You should not show everything to him. And at the end of the day, you should not go high and dry after he gets a concept from you, he should not say that I'm not interested in investing. So you should make all legal parameters. You should do a proper non-disclosure agreement, the legal parts of it, protecting your interest so that you know how to build your um, BT technology empire without sacrificing your interest or without neglecting the interest of your employees who are also working with you. Because even the contribution of your employees matters a lot but the contribution does not mean that they can take away your concept and sell it when they walk out from area of work so there should be some system where they also should protect your confidentiality so confidentiality agreement plays a major role so as i told you a legal person plays a major role when it comes to startups because many startups think that why i need a legal help so what is the reason to have for a legal help but I would say legal help is inevitable because unless and until you know how to protect your interest, how to generate business in a legal manner, how to save your taxes, how you can pay taxes, which is really required, and how you can avoid getting um, uh, burdened by taxes by uh, agitating the ones which you are not able to pay, which are the benefits, which are all the subsidies you are available to it. All this has to be monitored and properly studied. So, as I told you, the innovation system has to be properly documented, and every bit of your work pattern has to be done in that manner so that you know where you chip in and how you chip. In. Second thing, you're going to cater not to only the Indian public, you're going to cater to the foreign public. So, when it comes to drugs and other things, many of the drugs have to get licenses cleared in that country because to get the clearances, you need a proper legal system proper understanding of it. Otherwise, there won't be a proper marketing system to understand that how these whole things work out. Because unless until you know how to tackle all these things through a proper legal forum, you will not be able to prosper or you other you will end up in some litigation mode. So as I rightly told, preventive litigation is the need of the hour and you need to see a litigating person or a law firm to understand how you can go about so that you don't end up in a litigation mode. You can even think about having an arbitration clause in your agreements so that things can be settled in a very nice manner. And second thing, the vital thing as a startup faces is that the whole problem, what he makes out, he may have funds, he may have proper investor, he may have a good marketing structure, but end of the day, he does not have a proper R&D. He, he, he does not go to an incubation center where he gets knowledge about how his product has been developed or researched in other countries. What are the new innovative matters that are coming in? Because you get outdated very fast in this field. You need to upgrade yourself, update yourself, and try to understand what is new coming up so that you are uh, or your biotechnology concept is always taken up to the next level rather than getting yourself stagnated with some innovations for which you just invest money. Because you have to keep on investing in R&D. And R&D is the, what you mean, the lifeline of your business. So all these things are very much required. And second thing, you always should scout around and look for good 
persons who are BT trained persons from good colleges. So that's the reason we have seen a lot of BT uh, startups are coming up in South rather in Telangana, Andhra Pradesh, uh, Karnataka. Because there are a lot of universities, a lot of colleges. As it's, told. it's a combination of the uh, brain and the uh, power of money set a startup concept. So there is a lot of firms available in Gujarat, but there are very few universities which are available in Karnataka. Um, industries are there in very universities are there in Gujarat. So the whole concept comes up that we don't find much people uh, getting good resource person. So what I'm trying to say is that we need to work out in a fashion where the, there is a combination of universities, I mean, uh, legal people and uh, industry law, everybody joining hands, say that the BT is going to be the next generation's uh, opportunity hub and India is going to shine in that. So I would request our next speaker, Dr. Babina, to enlighten you about uh, IPR importance. And I think we we'll have more of an interactive session where your doubts and everything can be clear. Thank you very much. Good evening, all. Are you all able to hear me? Uh, yes, please. Yeah, you're clear. I'm clear? Yes. And is my slide being seen? Yes, yes, we can see the screen. Okay, okay. So good evening once again. The earlier two speakers have already uh, highlighted the key features of business potential in biotechnology and also on the role of startups in the biotech sector. My talk will focus on the importance of intellectual property protection and my talks of the webinar will be I will be touching upon uh, the impact of IP value on the economy of a country. Also overview of types of IP in biotech, challenges faced in biotech IP, consequences of improper IP protection and IP strategy and management, and then open up for question and answers. <clears throat> So the first slide. Are you able to see this? Uh, yes, yes. Yes, Father. We could see. Okay. So the global economy is dependent upon the creation and distribution of intellectual property. I will refer to it as IP henceforth. However, markets are flooded with duplicates of fakes, especially in pharmaceuticals, FMCG products, software pirated goods, music, films, resulting in significant loss to companies, corresponding evasion of tax duties, and also violation of the rights of the consumer. It is estimated that FMCG sector loses approximately 15% of its revenue to counterfeit goods, with several top brands losing up to 30% of their business due to IP crime. It's also worth noting that loss of IP is different from other types of loss. Suppose the loss of stolen goods like vehicles you can recover it through insurance, but the effect of IP cannot be done so. Let me give you an example of a US company called American Superconductor. 
It was the provider of clean energy solutions. Its biggest customer was a Chinese-based company called Sinovel. In 2011, this company ignored the company's contract and refused to pay millions of dollars. The US company discovered that Sinovel had obtained the source code for its electronic components and was installing a pirated version in wind turbines. Due to this, the company lost $100 million per year. In cases like this, there is no possibility of recovery of stolen goods. The only way forward is to wage a legal war to block the thief from using what they have stolen. This is always challenging and even more difficult when the thief is from a foreign country. So in this slide it, uh, is the result of a 2015 paper by the Federal Reserve Bank of Minneapolis. It says that in a robust country like US, who has most of its IP laws in place, it is still reeling under the loss due to theft of IP. Here you can see 22% of tech innovations all over the world originate in the USA, of which 27.7% uh, of the jobs come from IP intensive industry alone, which is relatable to 38.2% of the GDP of US. So let us see the IP theft. The IP theft causes US 300 to 600 billion annually dollars. And this of this counterfeit drugs sales in the US amount to $75 billion in one year alone. The average cost of a single data breach is $8.64 million and around 12,000 intellectual property cases are filed each year. And the average cost to defend a patent lawsuit, it exceeds $3 million. Go to the next slide. Okay. So the previous slide, I told you that 300 to 600 billion dollars is lost by the US alone in terms of revenue. But the uh, total generated worth IP is 5 trillion US dollars, of which let us see who is responsible for so much of theft and losses. It is found that China alone is responsible for staggering losses. 50 to 80% of all the IP theft originates in China. $48.2 billion are lost by US firms in sales, royalties, and license fee in China. Counterfeit and pirated goods is estimated of at 1.7 trillion US dollars. And out of this, 1.03 billion counterfeit goods alone from China were seized in the US. And now it is pegged to be two to three times more given the COVID pandemic and the chaos that followed. This was a 2015 statistic. Counterfeit pharma drug sales in the US amounted to more than $75 billion. Why have I given this study? because many people think that intellectual property theft doesn't do any harm aside from hurting the economy. However, one should remember that counterfeit drugs cause harm to life due to substandard quality as well as through mislabeling. Let us see what were the types of IP theft by China. The theft was mostly in terms of pirated software, counterfeit drugs, trade secret theft, and here the statistic shows that copyright violation was the highest, that is 24 billion US dollars, followed by trademark violations of 6 billion US dollars, patent violation of 1.3 billion US dollars, and trade secrets loss in 1.1 billion US dollars. In 2020, the FBI had made 19 arrests on account of Chinese economic espionage. China has been at the forefront of most of the IP theft. It does not mean that India is in the clear. 
Unfortunately, there is no similar kind of data available for the Indian scenario as I've shown for the US. But it is interesting to note that the United States trade representatives, that is USTR report released recently, that is in April 27th of 2022, has included India's name in the priority watch list, along with six other nations, namely China, Argentina, Ch Chile, Indonesia, Russia, and Venezuela. Why? Because we do not have proper mechanism in place for IP protection. 48% of the world's software piracy is from or originating in India, especially for movie and music downloads. So the report also states that India is one of the top five sources economies for fake goods. And it is home to several markets which promote counterfeiting and piracy as identified in the 2021 notorious marks markets list. Let us see who does intellectual property theft really impact. It impacts country, uh, companies such as biotech companies, what we are talking about now, which lose in billions and suffer brand damage from inferior goods that carry their name. It impacts governments through tax lost revenue, for example, Basmati versus a Texmati in the US. It impacts creators inventors who create the IP through lost potential value. It impacts consumers through decreased costs of goods and dangerous counterfeit products. Therefore, it is necessary to protect IP as it is a potential economic resource, which can play a vital role in boosting the economy and providing efficient returns. Since I've been continuously using the word IP or intellectual property, let me now describe what this term means. As many a time I'm faced this situation where people contact me saying they want to register their patent, but finally what it turns out to be is what a trademark, that it was a trademark or a copyright registration that they wanted. This is because the general perception is that IP means only patents. This next slide will help you understand the different types of IP available in biotech that you can use to protect your creations. Now, what is IP or intellectual property rights? It is actually a bundle of rights of which trademarks, designs, copyrights, etc., form a part and parcel, each one differing from the other. So let me tell you what is IP and why it is important. IP is our intellectual property is the creation of the human intellect. This creation has to be protected. Just like you have a physical property such as your house. You can say you're the owner of this house only if you have the property documents such as a kata of that house in your name. In the same way, protection of interests of creators by giving them rights over their creation is now which is considered an intellectual property and the rights conferred are called the intellectual property rights. It includes in all the broadest sense, all the rights resulting from the intellectual activity in industrial, scientific, literary and artistic fields. But to protect them, to encourage investment in research, because if there is no sort of protection, inventors and investors will not be able to benefit from their creative efforts. Owners of rights can prevent unauthorized use of their IP to stop copying, to control distribution, and to retain license or sell their intellectual property. Now let's come to what is a patent. A patent protects an invention. In the broadest sense, it is a solution which you are giving to a problem in a tangible form. You have an idea to solve a problem which is intangible. It is there in your mind. Then you convert it into a technical or a physical solution. That is, you are expressing it in a tangible form. Key features to obtain a patent. It should be new or novel. 
it should involve an inventive step and it should be not obvious to a person skilled in the art it can be applied to a product or a process here for the patent i have given the example of remdesivir which is a pharma product a formulation initially used for treating hepatitis it is a broad spectrum antiviral produced by gilead and marketed by roche through licensing agreement later it was repurposed and used against ebola virus and as we know during the covid-19 pandemic it was used for post infection treatment of the corona virus in several countries including india is a patent granted only for a formulation or composition no a patent is granted to anyone who invents any new and useful machine article of manufacture a process or composition of matter in biotech we can apply for a process or method as well as for the final product next is trademark trademark is a symbol word or words legally registered to represent a company or product it protects brand names and logos used on goods and services example is taj mahal tea dettol and if you use it say for a service mark you can use it say for manipal hospitals fortis hospital if you use it on medicines it can be used for brand names such as dolo 650 and uh, here i have used uh, coronel since i thought i would speak on the controversy but if time permits maybe i'll touch upon that what is design design refers to industrial design that is new or original it features it is the feature of shape pattern or, or ornament it should be applied to an article by an industrial process it is basically an appeal to the eye that is aesthetic appeal without any functionality involved the example i have given here is the color of the tablets the shape of the tablets it could be a medicated shoe design it could be shape and color of medicine bottles it could be various shape of masks visor shields etc next is geographical indication or a gi as it is commonly referred to it is a sign used on products that have a specific geographical origin and possess qualities or reputation that are due to that particular climatic condition such as soil ph temperature etc of that place here is an example of kanyakumari matti banana which has been applied for protection as a gi in tamil nadu kanyakumari matti banana has a distinct morphological character where the fruit apex is 2.5 to 3 cm long and it looks like the mouth of a crocodile and it's also called crocodile finger banana it has unique traits as well as medicinal properties other examples which i can cite for banana may be a puvan variety and for jasmine varieties like mysore mallige rice varieties like basmati tea varieties like darjeeling tea then is the copyright uh, what i'll talk about copyright pro law protects creative expressions that is it should be an original expression of an original literary dramatic musical and artistic work in india computer software is protected under copyrights and not patents some examples for copyright in biotech industry include brochures leaflets maybe you are describing the medicine properties it could be the website design of your company content of the website here i have given the brochure or the covid-19 pamphlet given out by the ministry of india which is a copyrightable subject matter coming to the last uh, type of ip which is trade secrets what it is the protection of proprietary or exclusive information against unauthorized commercial use by others it has three key aspects it is something like for example a formula here i have given example of coca cola formula which has an economic value to a business because it is not generally known or easily discoverable by observation 
and you have to have made efforts to have to maintain its secrecy. Information that can be kept as state secrets include formulas, patterns, compilations, programs, methods, techniques, or processes. Some famous example other than Coca-Cola is the secret recipe of KFC and, and also the search algorithm by Google. In uh, biotech, it can include customer lists, manufacturing processes, hybridization conditions, cell lines, operate merchandising plants. Okay, uh, there's the last IP I uh, forgot to mention is plant variety and farmer's rights. What does it deal with? It deals with the protection of plant varieties and to recognize and protect the rights of the farmers who have been cultivating and developing superior varieties over ages. A new variety will be registered if it conforms to the criteria of novelty, distinctiveness with regard to the character you are claiming, uniformity in its characters, and stability in all the generations for the claimed character. Here I've given the example of Indra Sun, which is a farmer bred high yielding rice variety, which yields up to 8,000 kg per hectare. It has red colored roots and has high resistance to disease. Now due to high level of R&D work in biotech, a lot of new plant varieties have been released in India. To summarize on the types of IP, I've spoken about five, seven types of IP which you can use to protect in biotech. That is trademarks, copyrights, yeah. patents, yeah. trade secrets, designs, uh, plant variety, and farmer's rights. Now that we have seen the different uh, types of protection that are available for biotech invention and the enormity of the losses which we saw in the first few slides, due to not having a robust IP plan, let us find out why India is limping when it comes to the protection of its IP assets. One of the major hurdles faced by Indian biotech today is the legal and regulatory framework. The biotech companies have to wade through various opticals to patent their inventions. Of the various forms of IP I listed earlier, patents are one of the most important assets owned by the biotech companies. Now biotech, I mean patents deal with inventions and biotech inventions have to deal with two major blocks. What are they? One is the legal concern. The legal concern is can life forms be patented? The second concern is the moral concern. Moral concern that life is not something that can be patented. Therefore, despite being a useful area to science, obtaining a patent in biotechnology Mara, often I, becomes tricky, I, especially in our country. Why is it so? This is because Article 27 of the TRIPS Agreement mentions that member countries for which India is a member can decide what is patentable. Therefore, inventions that are against public order or morality or would cause serious prejudice to plant, animal, human life are not patentable. Also, those questions that involve treatment, diagnostic, and surgical methods, along with plants and animals, except microorganisms, are not patentable. Also, TRIPS has not properly explained about microorganisms and microbiological processes. So this triggers a confusion as to whether the microorganisms that exist freely in nature can be patented or human intervention is required for patenting so as to establish novelty in the microorganisms. This also leads to uncertainty whether or not a product that is produced by a known microorganism can be patented. Due to this lack of clarity in the TRIPS agreement, India itself is expected to draw a, distinguish, a distinct bit, distinction between the products of human intervention leading to novelty and the ones that are freely occurring in nature. So hence, there is a lot of ambiguity in the subject matter and the whether a subject matter merits a patent or not is unclear. Citing a landmark case, 
Pseudomonas putida, which is famously known as the diamond versus Chakraborty case. Now, Chakraborty had, the scientist Chakraborty had created a genetically engineered bacterium which could clear the oil spills in the oceans. Therefore, a boon for repairing the ocean ecosystem. But the patent was not granted. What was the objection? That it is a living organism and therefore it is a discovery and not a new invention. However, it was effectively argued that this bacterium is not an organism found occurring naturally in nature. And therefore, it is meriting a patent because it is created through human intervention. After this landmark judgment, genetically modified organisms were allowed to be patented. So if you see the section 3C of our patent act allows only modified microorganisms to be patented. Another landmark judgment was allowing for protection of process of manufacture. In the year 2002, Dimineaco AG applied for a patent for his invention of the process for preparing a live vaccine to combat bursitis. Bursitis is an infectious poultry disease. The patent office denied his application on the ground that the process did not represent an invention. But the High Court of Calcutta ruled that it is a manufacture of ma uh, what they have applied for is a manner of manufacture. And even though it, the product may contain a living organism, the process patent can be a process can be patented. So from then on, process patents or a method of manufacture gained momentum in biotech. So as we saw in the previous slide, in order for anything to be patentable, an invention must be new and non-obvious in nature. So what is challenging in biotech is the narrow scope of protection. If you see the core subject of biotechnology inventions, such as tissues, genes, cell lines, stem cells, seeds, plants, animals, and their parts, are all something that already exists in nature. So where is the novelty in something which already exists in nature. Also, seeds can't be patented in India to protect the farmers. Since a patent on seeds will result in preventing farmers from saving and exchanging seeds. Also, converting these naturally occurring subject matter into private properties is considered unethical and against public interest. For example, those stem cells can be used to cure ailments including heart problems and diabetes, and maybe also replacement of the body parts. It is not allowed. Why? Because the question of morality comes in, because embryos have to be killed in order to harvest the stem cells. Similar techniques are used for isolating individual gene sequences, microorganisms. The obviousness is another tricky characteristic in the domain of biotechnology. Also, the difference between invention and discovery gets blurred. So what aspect of biotech can be patented? Products and methods of genetic engineering are allowed, such as genetically modified organisms, artificially engineered genes, transgenic genes, uh, seeds, transgenic varieties of plants, if it is new, inventive, and has industrial application. In plants, we have new genes with desirable traits, such as insect repellents. Example, we have the Bt cotton and Bt brinjal, which Dr. Vidya had also spoken about. There are also now concerns regarding genetically modified organisms. Not only are they alive, but they can also reproduce on their own. And there are not well standardized or easily described methods. What happens if they are released into the environment there is a possibility of them interacting dangerously with the environment. Therefore, the patenting of biotechnology inventions continues to be an issue. The current patent framework may fail in providing sufficient protection as the genetic engineered inventions are very complex and cannot be accurately described, therefore making it hard to decide whether the invention is patentable or not. But does that mean that you should stay away from biotech or protecting IP in biotech. As we have seen, when all the businesses were down during COVID times, the sector which saw maximum growth and innovation was the biotech sector, next to, of course, the IT sector. There was a high level of innovation, be it in the form of formulations 
both pharmaceutical as well as herbal composi compositions to treat COVID and its after effects, vaccines, generic drugs, ventilators, PPE kits, masks, sanitizers and the like, sanitizers and the like. Inventions related to biological sciences, such as microbiology, genetics, molecular biology, biochemistry and chemical engineering saw a major jump. What about the IP? A phenomenal jump was seen in the number of patents, trademarks, design and copyrights filed not only in India, but the world over. So now knowing the complications and limitations of protecting intellectual property in biotech, it is essential to ensure that technologies that can save lives and further improve the world are property, uh, properly protected. That is why it is essential to have a good IP strategy and a management plan. What is IP portfolio? Why should a startup build an IP portfolio? Why is it important? Now, a collection of all IP rights, such as patents, trademarks, copyrights, designs, trademarks of a company, totally constitute a bundle of rights referred to as an IP portfolio. By filing for all of this together, a company, a biotech company, will have the freedom to commercialize its product without infringing on the IP rights of other organizations, at the same time prevent others from selling the same invention for a certain period of time. Thereby, it will be able to safeguard its R&D and also reap benefits. We should remember IP is a business asset as well as a monetary asset. Businesses use symbols, designs, logos, catchphrases as part of their marketing strategy and identity. Remember, it's these images and words that help a company connect to its customers. Thus, they need to be protected from possible commercial copycats who might use or copy the designs for their own economic gain. Sometimes you cannot bring an enforcement action if your intellectual property is not registered. So it makes good business sense Therefore, to protect your IP and restrict others from copying, using, selling, or distributing, and profiting from it without your consent. So a strong IP portfolio helps to set your business apart from your competitors. Why should you then commercialize the IP? You know that it's a property, and you can generate money through licensing, franchising, royalty, and you can also maybe gift it or maybe mortgage it against loans. This helps you to recover your investment in R&D and make good your losses. So how to go about your IP? If you're an individual startup MSME, there are a lot of uh, uh, incentives given by the government where individuals and startups and MSMEs, the MSMEs they have only 50 they have to pay only 50% of the government fees and also there is a waiver in the professional fees if you approach a registered intellectual property facilitator so to brief up to brief up let me just uh, say that a good ip strategy helps you to take the right steps to protect your ip Develop and management of your IP portfolios, how to protect your company names, product, brands, and ideas, craft a risk management strategy for IP theft, along with related licensing, non-disclosure, and non-compete agreements, which advocate Pillai already spoke about. And it is better to seek professional help of a good IP resource who will be able to guide you through all these aspects. So to conclude my talk, let me talk on the importance of IP protection by quoting Piyush Goel, Union Minister for Commerce and Industries, who said that at the Karnataka Startup Awards two days ago, that our Indian government is looking at $2 trillion worth of exports of services and goods by 2030, and six to $7 trillion by 2047, which will greatly boost our Indian economy. So here's to more and more IP innovation in the biotech sector. Thank you. Here I've given a quick uh, checklist in the next uh, to assess your IP protection status. I would request you all to go through this. And if the answer, just go through what IP do you own? 
Is it a copyright, trademark, patent, design? Have you registered the same? Yes, no, in progress. Are you aware of their terms? Example for patent, it has to be renewed every it for I mean 20 years. Patent is only for 20 years. Trademark is renewed once in 10 years. And copyright holds good for the life of the applicant plus 60 years. And design is renewable once in 10 years. Have you renewed? or paid term fees for your IP as detailed above? Yes, no, in progress. If for any of these answers, if uh, questions, if your answer has been other than yes, then you really need to rethink your company's goals and take steps to change this scenario. To conclude, let me do a recap of what I spoke. One is I spoke on the uh, overview of the types of IP, the losses, the challenges faced, the consequences of improper IP protection, and also IP strategy and management. And I gave, walked you through an IP protection checklist. Um, if you have any queries, you may contact me on this or take my address from Andhra Chamber of Commerce. I'm now open for question and answers. Thank you very much, Dr. Babita. It was very informative for all of us. I mean, we were able to understand the concept of IPR. And I know many of us who are not aware about IPR, they also got a feeling what IPR means. And you have given a very good uh, information, uh, awareness program about internet except property rights and how it should be protected. Because many people think they only need to protect their car, building, and other properties, not their IP knowledge. Because they feel it cannot be mortgaged or it's not going to fetch them money. But you have also given them an insight that if you go and take care of your concept, you can go and rent it with the bank and try to cover your expenses which are going to need for the R&D, which is very informative and which is the need People should be aware and people should feel that it's not a waste to protect their idea. And many of times we think, as you rightly told, even in my office also, many times people come to me and say that I want to do a patent. And at the end of the day, they walk out of my office doing a trademark or a copyright. So, still, even among the well known people, they are not very aware of what a patent is, what a trademark is, what a copyright is. So, your checklist is very helpful. And I would request even the other chamber to circulate to those people who are not able to attend it so that they will also try to do an exercise for a checklist and find out whether they have already done IPR protection for their <clears throat> company or not. If not, let them think and rediscover the concept. Thanks, madam. Yes, uh, ma yes. in fact, I, I was think we are open for question and I, session. Yeah, yeah. In fact, I was about to ask about the presentation because. If they share the presentation, then we will be able to circulate it to the members. Participants, yeah, I think the participants who have registered. Yes. Yeah. Because yeah, it's like a very me. need of the, that's very informative. She has really. Yeah, very, very informative. And as uh, Mr. Manoj Bala rightly put it, you know, people view biotechnology on one side as well as IPR on the other side. They are not able to relate with each other. Whereas your presentation was very helpful that how IPR has to be taken into account, you know, in even in the biotechnology sector. And moreover, people, uh, even in fact, we were talking, we used to talk with Manoj Bale, whoever who, you always used to say that IPR has to be given a lot of importance, you know, pay, patents and copyrights and things like that. So we will be doing more programs now because, you know, many members really need that. So thank you very much, Dr. Bapita, for your session. And I request you to please share the presentation to our mail ID so that we can circulate it to the not only to the participants, also to the members who have registered for the program. Thank you. Sure. Now the floor is open for Q. I would like to make one request, Vijay Lakshmi, yeah, uh, yeah. to Mr. Manoj Pillai and uh, to Dr. Tarapan uh, that um, we should do a similar session uh, for medical devices sector, uh, Vijay Lakshmi through the chamber. 
because um, uh, the sector is brought under 100% regulations. And uh, so we will invite all these manufacturers and uh, uh, the importers also to be part of this. The biggest challenge in that sector is counterfeit products and with a lot of innovations happening in the country. Mm -hmm. Uh, especially when it is brought into 100% regulations now, even lot many distributors, traders are also becoming uh, uh, kind of manufacturers. They're getting into this domain. So no. protecting uh, IP is very critical. Um, maybe we'll request uh, Mr. Manoj Pillai, maybe sometime next month, uh, we can do a specific session. We will invite um, uh, industry associations and the manufacturers and all of them uh, to be part of this. Definitely. Because what we Definitely have seen not. in the biotech space is the startups are actually um, what the country is witnessing now in this um, biotech space is the technocrat entrepreneurship. Most of the startups are technocrats by themselves and they know the value of uh, IP. Uh, it is happening at that startup stage, but this this needs to get extended to many micro and MSME businesses because uh, the understanding is not there and the, the importance of uh, protecting their uh, exactly. IP is not there. So we need to do some specific sessions. Uh, I mean, en en uh, engage them also. It's a very, um, uh, very good session. Thank you so much, uh, Mr. Pillay and Dr. Babita and uh, Vidya also. Very informative session. I think, Chamber, we should keep doing... Uh, uh, regular sessions mm, on sectors like, um, of course, Thank medical you. devices. We've been doing a lot of programs uh, ourselves, and I think uh, we should also do more specific sessions for biotech. We will invite um, most of the hubs next time. Some collaborative events uh, we will do with CCAMP, uh, Bangalore, and uh, uh, VIT. We have a lot of TBIs uh, in the state also, VIT Technology Business Incubator, and all of them. We will invite yes. um, all the TBIs yes, yes. and uh, some of this um, BIREC funded institutions also. Because these are the knowledge sessions which should be disseminated. It's just my feedback, it's not a question. Very Thank true. you. Thank you so much. No, no. Very true, very true. Thank you, Thank you for the feedback. Thank you. It's a thank you very much, ma'am. It's a more of a feedback counsel law rather than a question. It's not question a question. Only ends with an answer. But yes. No, question ends with an yes, answer. Yes. But feedback makes us think more and more how we should improve. Because if somebody asks a question, you answer it, and that's the end of the whole conversation. But if you give a <laughs> feedback, it is an ongoing process. People have to add on, add on, add on, and their knowledge gets disseminated. As you rightly told, you have to disseminate knowledge. And as Dr. Vijay, I mean, uh, has been telling us, even now, people are not aware what they should even find, whether a patent or a copyright or a trademark. So that is the level of awareness people are having. So leave alone how the you know, efforts are taken. We need to more and more educate them because at the end of the day, only by educating them, they'll be able to protect them. Yes. And now I request somebody to put their feedbacks as well as their questions. <laughs> Any questions? Thanks, ma'am. Very nice session. This is very informative. Thank you. On behalf of Adra Chamber of Commerce, we would like to present an e-memento to the speakers. Thank you, Ms. Vidya, ma'am. This is on behalf of Adra Chamber and Mr. Manoj Pillai and Dr. Babita. We will be sending this e-memento by mail. So we thank you thank for you, the ma wonderful session. As Ms. Rama, madam, said that we will be doing uh, sector-specific programs on IPR. Maybe sometime next month on first on health sector, medical sector, and then medical devices sector, and then from one by one we will start doing it. Thank you, Mr. Manoj Pillai, for your support. Only thing is, you know, we have got 65 registrations, and surprisingly, we have hardly got only 30 people today to participate. So hopefully, next time all the people attend our programs. Thank you. No, I think. I thank my I team. Next time, what we should. No, I think next time what we should do is that we should tell tell us summary to them. So that what we are going to talk about, a synopsis of what this thing, so that they'll kindle the interest and they feel they're going to get something out of it. Now, rather than only the topic, he'll also send a synopsis of our um, whole program so that they'll know what they're going to get out of the whole program. I think that is also is 
మనోజ్ పల్లి for quite some time that ipr has to be the trust has to be given to ipr and more people have to know the awareness is not there that's what i feel sincerely as far as the msmes are concerned once when they have a problem then they realize that there is an ipr and they want to you know sort out it but before that you know they don't yeah. want to give proper uh, you know knowledge to that so it is better that we have a continuous session so that more and more people attend our program no actually what rightly told by dr mukhtar also that it portfolio is to be so we are trying to circulate a portfolio concept to the members asking like or she has put in the last slide as for no answer so that they can do a self analysis and find out whether we are having some idea or not to their portfolio or not i will be circulating to you ma'am you can circulate to our members it's a like a free of cost uh, self check study where they can understand Whether they are really having some IPR which they need to be protected or not, so we can try to instill the feeling of an IP portfolio. And in that course of action, even we can even do an analysis of their business and check out whether any biotechnology concept can be integrated in their business activity. As I said before, even if they have the agriculture field, they can think about biotechnology. Some question out there, how uh, in the chat box regarding the uh, cheap fertilizers. Uh, can be brought into the uh, market where when biotechnology fertilizers are costly whether we we should go for cheap ones or the best fertilizers so the thing is that people are not going for it because of cost aspect and other things so we can think about it and we can work it out and we can help any anyway, thanks for the session and once again thank yeah. you all for the chamber and uh, sure. uh, thank, thank you. you and our president for giving me an opportunity thank you thank you thank you sir bye thank you thank you thank you very much bye